In this video, I'm going to talk about how to read a string of input in from the user when that string has a space in it. And the reason why this is necessary is the default behavior of scanf. So if I were to say here car buffer 100 and I make a character array capable of storing up to 100 characters, I could use scanf to accept a string. So I could say enter, could say scanf percent s, and then I could say buffer here, and then I could do a printf and I could print out the buffer. So I could say buffer percent s and we'll print out the buffer here. And you know, we're, we're using scanf to store a string here because we're saying scanf percent s is the placeholder of a string. And we've got our buffer here that's gonna store a string. And so we could compile this and run it. And if we put in like this and that, then we get buffer this and that. And it seems like it's all good. But if I try to put spaces in it, like if I say this and that, the buffer just contains this. So what's going on here? What's going on here is the way scanf works by default with percent %s is that it's going to read in a string up until either a new line is encountered, as was the case here, or until white space is encountered, like a space character here. So as soon as this space character was encountered in the input stream here, then the, the scanf basically says, okay, that's the end of the string that we want to store here, and it stores it in a buffer, and that's it. And that's actually the default behavior of scanf with percent %s. So in general, people will actually tell you that you don't really want to use scanf for user input in C. There's actually other techniques you can use that are better. So one technique we can use that actually does use scanf still is we can actually use the pattern matching tools that we're allowed to do with scanf to actually match a pattern that does include white space. So that works like this. I'm going to say here percent, and I'm going to say open bracket, this sort of hat character here, slash n, close bracket, percent star c. So that's a bit of a mouthful. And this, this here is sort of out of scope of the video, but what's going on here, just so you know, is this is a placeholder, but it's a special placeholder because it includes a pattern in it. And the pattern is, this here means match any character that is not a new line character. So that means match any character that is not a new line character. The star here means match zero or more of those characters. And then we're gonna store the result into buffer here. And so what's going on here then is that we're using this pattern to basically match for any character that is not a new line character. And up until we get to new line character, we're just gonna store all that data into buffer. So if we run this here now, if I do a recompile here, and then I run it, and I can, say, and I can then say this and that, and I get this and that, and it works. So this is one approach you can use to get around this problem using scanf, and it uses pattern matching. And pattern matching, like I said, it's kind of outside the scope of this video. If I were to bring up all of it and talk about all of it, there's quite a bit to pattern matching, and it is a powerful tool that you see. It's very popular in languages like uh, Perl and PHP and JavaScript. It's popular all, all over the place, and you can do it in C as well, actually, with this sort of syntax here. So another approach you could use would be to use the function fgets. So we'll actually try this approach now. We're gonna actually comment this out. We'll say enter still. And I'm gonna use f get s. So f get s, you might normally think of this as being used when we're reading from a file, right? Because we could put like a buffer here. We could put the number of characters to read here. And next is where we'd normally put a file handle. So what we can give instead of a file handle to read in data from the file is we can actually say std in. So std in, what that is, is that's the standard input stream. And the standard input stream is normally going to be the terminal. That's normally gonna be the terminal. It could be something like a file, actually. It is possible to change it to be something like a file. But for our purposes in this video, standard in is going to be input from the terminal. And we can then store it into the buffer here. So what we could do is we could then store it into the buffer and then print it out this way. So we'll say, we'll print it out the same way we did before here. So I'll say clear, let's recompile. Let's run this as enter here. I'll say this and that. And we get buffer containing this and that. And what's going on there is F gets is gonna read up until 100 characters and store them into this buffer. And it's gonna read them not from a file, but from standard in instead. So this is another approach you can use to read in characters from standard input in C and to read in strings when they, when they contain a space in them. And then one other approach I'll show you, I don't know why I like this, I just kind of do, so why not, why not talk about it, is that I could read in this string one character at a time. So I'm gonna say here car C, and I'm gonna make a character, then I'm gonna say int i is equal to zero. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a loop that's going to read in the character one character at a time. It's going to read in the string one character at a time. So I'm going to say here while, and I'm going to say here get car. And get car is going to return the current character in our standard input there. And I'm going to assign it to C. And I'm going to say that so long as this does not equal the new line character, keep reading in characters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to store it into the buffer. So I'm going to say here buffer at I is equal to, and I'm going to say C. Then when we're done reading in characters, I'm going to say here buffer at I is equal to the null terminator. So I'll put the null terminator on the string there. Now, what I've got to do is I've got to increment I each time through this loop. To keep this nice and short, I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to say here I++ here. And the way that the I++ will work in this case is it's going to use the current value of I in this expression, which at first is going to be zero. Then after this expression is done, after this statement is done running essentially, then it's going to increment I by one. So I is going to be uh, one at the end of this. And it'll just keep going up and up using that pattern each time. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.